So this Sunday morning, I just want to talk to us for a few minutes uh, on the topic that healing is ours. Healing belongs to us or healing is ours. And uh, just share a few things that will encourage our faith and then pray towards that. I believe God towards that and then just see what God will do right here in our midst. For those of you watching online, uh, we believe God will touch you right where you are. Uh, 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 whether it's your living room or wherever you're watching us from. Uh, we're expecting God to do uh, amazing things. It's important for us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ to know that God's will for us is that he wants us to be healed. He wants us delivered. And he wants us whole. That should be settled in our hearts. And uh, there should be no question concerning God's will, concerning healing, wholeness, and our well-being. And so I just want to encourage our faith along those lines this morning. Uh, sometimes we may have certain doubts. We may have certain questions. But hopefully the few things we share this morning will encourage our faith. You see, when God revealed himself... One of the ways he unveiled himself or revealed himself to us is through covenant names. He said, I am Yahweh or I am Jehovah. And then he attached to that Jehovah title, Yahweh title, several things. There are probably 52, uh, around 52 what we call as Jehovah titles. So Jehovah, just the name Yahweh or Jehovah simply means the eternal self-existent one who keeps covenant. So when he says, I am Jehovah, I am Yahweh, he's saying, I am the eternal self-existent God who keeps promise, who keeps covenant. I'm a covenant-keeping God, is that what, is what he is saying. So when he says, I am Jehovah Rapha, he's saying, I am your covenant keeping God who is your healer and healing is part of my covenant with you. The eternal self-existent covenant keeping God who is your healer. I am Jehovah Rapha. That means as part of my covenant with you, healing is provided for you. Jehovah Rapha. So God by nature, God by his own covenant name, which reveals his nature, is saying, I am your healer. And God will never say or do anything that contradicts his own nature. Amen? If he says, this is who I am, then that's who he is. He will never say anything or do anything that is contrary to his own nature. So we must be completely settled in our hearts that the God we serve is the God who heals us. And healing is part of his covenant with us. Another name that he disclosed, just to reveal some aspect of his character or his nature was, I am Jehovah Shalom. Now, when you and I use shalom, we say be at peace, you know, have tranquility of mind or ease of mind. But in the Hebrew, the word shalom is much bigger than that. The word shalom means total well-being. Total well-being. You will have shalom, everything in your life, spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially, socially, Every aspect of your life will go well. That is shalom. And he says, I am Jehovah Shalom. As part of my covenant with you, I am bringing shalom into your life. Total well-being. Jehovah Shalom. So this is who our God is. He is the God who provides shalom to us. And when you pray for yourself, you pray for other people, you say, God, bless them with shalom. It's a nice, easy word that simply means that say, God, just give them everything. Make everything well in their lives. Everything. Shalom. And all be well with you. Shalom. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ came to reveal this God to us. Now for, for many of us, uh, we hear these things, 
their concepts, but what would this God be like? What, what is God like? So the Bible says that in many places that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Or he is the exact representation of this invisible God. So if you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. Jesus said, it is written of him, I come to do your will. So everything Jesus said and did is an expression of the will of God. Or you can say it like this, Jesus Christ is the will of God in action. You want to see the will of God? You want to know the will of God? Look at Jesus. Simple. Right? Jesus said, he who has seen me has seen the Father. So you want to know what God is like? Look at Jesus. You want to know what, what would God do when somebody who is sick comes to him? Look at Jesus. What did he do when someone came to him with their sickness, with their disease, with a problem? Not once in, it has been, not once is, is it recorded in the Gospels that Jesus ever tell a person, it is the will of my Father for you to suffer. Not once. Not once is it recorded in the Gospels. Did Jesus ever tell somebody, the Heavenly Father is teaching you a lesson to learn through this sickness? Not once. Now we've made all these things up, but Jesus didn't. <laughs> he never said these kinds of things. We've made these things up. Right? So you want to understand who God is like, who God is, what is his will, what is he like? Look at Jesus. He never turned every any person away who came to him in faith. He healed them all over and over and over again. It says they brought to him all who were sick, and he healed them all. Or heal everyone or any kind of sickness, any kind of uh, disease, Jesus healed them. That's the will of God. That is who God is really like. Amen? So look at Jesus. He revealed the Father's will to us. So to this morning, I want us to look at two miracles that Jesus did. And draw just simple lessons to encourage our faith and that we're going to pray. You see, there are many, many miracles that Jesus did. In fact, there were so many people healed many times. The Bible says great multitudes came to him and he healed them all. So it doesn't even record, you know. There could have been 500 people in that multitude that received healing. There could have been a few thousand people who got healed. It just says great multitudes came to him and he healed them all. Right? So there are many, many miracles Jesus did. Not all of them are recorded for us. But we can look at what is recorded and see, learn something about God. Learn some things that will encourage our faith. So the first miracle that we want to look at is in Matthew chapter 15. I'll read this out for us. Uh, it will also come up on our screens. Matthew 15 verses 21 to 28. It says here, Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. So let's, let's try to picture this whole thing, what's going on. Here was this woman of Canaan. She was not a Jew. She didn't belong to the house of Israel. The, uh, she wasn't a Jew. She didn't belong to the people of Israel. She had a daughter who was really troubled with demons. She, the daughter was in a bad shape. We don't know all the suffering she was going through. 
right? Now, obviously, this woman hears about Jesus. She hears about all the miracles Jesus is doing. Uh, all the people that are being healed, the blind that are seeing, the lame that are walking, the deaf hearing, dumb speaking, people being set free from all kinds of evil spirits and so on. And, and then she says, hey, I need to get in on this. Is he charging any money? No, it's free. What do you have to do? He just tells people, according to your faith, be it unto you. So all you need to do is have faith. I can do that. That's easy. So she gets in there. She finds out that Jesus is coming to her part of the country. And so she makes her way to Jesus. But some problem. Jesus doesn't respond. First problem. <laughs> she comes to him. Have mercy on me. The Bible says he keeps quiet. He doesn't say anything. Now, if you and I were in a situation like that, we would have immediately arrived at a conclusion. God is silent, keeping quiet. It means this is his will for me. How many of us have arrived at that conclusion? <laughs> Hey, no, just because he's keeping quiet does not mean you've got to stay in that situation. Or does not mean that situation is God's will for you. Don't, don't, don't draw, don't come, don't come hurriedly to that wrong conclusion. Thank God this woman didn't arrive at that conclusion. She went to his assistance now. She troubled them so much they complained to Jesus. Hey, please get rid of her. Handle her for us. Get rid of her. And then Jesus reminds them. He says, look, at this moment, I've been commissioned only to minister to the people of Israel. So that's the assignment. Now, that didn't mean Jesus was not going to be available to the nations. That was coming right after his resurrection. That the name of Jesus would be proclaimed. He was going to be a light to the Gentiles. So surely, he, you know, the, the Jesus Christ is for every human person. But during that three, three and a half years of earthly ministry, his focus was, his assignment was the house of Israel. So he says, look, we've got a little theological problem here. Right now, I am sent to the house of Israel. Now you can imagine that the Bible doesn't say it. But I'm sure either Peter or James or John would have gone to this woman and said, hey, listen, we've got a real serious theological issue. <laughs> At this moment, <laughs> right now, only the house of Israel qualifies for all that he's doing. Now imagine what would have gone through this woman's mind. <laughs> there is no way I can be a part of the house of Israel. I mean, you, you have to be born that way. So I'm theologically disqualified. I'm harping on that because sometimes we've heard things preached to us that tell us God will not heal you. Maybe God wants you to remain sick. Maybe God wants you this and that and so on and so forth. We've heard things that actually rob us of what God desires for us. Now look at this woman. You know, first of all, the first time she came, Jesus is keeping quiet. He's not saying anything. Could be quite disappointing. Now the disciples are presenting her with a, a very difficult problem. You've got to belong to the house of Israel. And there's no way she could do that. But you know what? She says, I don't care. Theology or no theology. I don't care. You keep it. She bypasses all of them and somehow she goes to Jesus and then what does he do? The Bible says she worships him. She says, Lord, in other words, and I'm just, par I know, I'm just making the story up around that whole thing. But she's saying, Lord, I know I don't belong to the house of Israel, but I'm embracing you as my Lord. She calls him Lord. Lord, have mercy on me. And she worships him. I was, I'm getting on this. I wasn't born this way, but I know I can do it. I can worship you. So I worship you. And then Jesus says, you know, he puts it in a, he uses figurative language. So don't get upset by, with Jesus why he said that. Sometimes you and I also use figure, figurative language. You know, you tell somebody you're a pain in the neck. 
Or if somebody calls you, how's Bangalore weather? And you say it's raining cats and dogs. <laughs> you're, using, you're using figurative language. You know what it means. It doesn't mean, you know. So Jesus is using figurative language to this woman. He, sa he says to her, I can't take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. I can't take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Now, don't get hung up on the little dogs part. Look at the children's bread part. Okay, what did, what did this woman want? She came for healing. She came for deliverance. Not for herself, for her daughter. And Jesus is saying, woman, what you've come for really is the children's bread. Now, in that context, of course, he was referring to the house of Israel because he just made mention of them a, a, a few statements earlier. The house of Israel, according to Acts 3.25, they were sons of the covenant. They were people of the covenant. So they are the children he's referring to. So he's saying, look, this healing, this deliverance that you're asking is really the children's bread. It belongs to people of the covenant. Those who have a covenant with God, it's their bread. Do you know this woman was so smart, so determined. She said, keep the bread, just give me a crumb. Just give me a crumb. Keep the bread. Because the puppies can eat the crumbs that fall off the master's table. Just give me the crumb. I mean, that's what she believed. That even a little crumb is enough to deliver her daughter. And sure enough, her daughter was delivered that day. But let's focus on the children's bread. You and I are children of God. Jesus established a covenant that made you and I as sons and daughters of God. And healing, deliverance, wholeness is the children's bread. Let's say it together. Healing, wholeness. Is the children's bread. Healing and deliverance. Is God's provision. For all. Who are in covenant with him. It's the children's bread. Amen. And you know. Receiving healing. Is as simple. As eating bread. Off your father's table. Let's say it together. If you don't seem like you guys believe it. It's like you're looking at me like, hmm. <laughs> Let's say it together. Receiving healing is as simple as eating bread off my father's table. Let's say it again because you need to believe it. <laughs> Receiving healing is as simple as eating bread. Off my father's table. Amen. It says healing. Deliverance. Wholeness. For body and mind and soul. It is the children's bread. It is your bread. The children's bread. Now in the Old Testament. David had some revelation of this. He said. The Lord. Prepares a table. For me. In the presence of my enemies. Who's preparing a table for you? The Lord. So just trying to imagine. God Almighty is spreading out a table for you. It's bigger than the biggest buffet you've been to. Amen. God is spreading out a table for you. In the presence of your enemies. The problem with us is we are looking at the enemies instead of looking at the table. You're looking at sickness. Oh, God. You're looking at problems. Oh, God. And God is saying, my child, I prepared a table for you. Look at the table. Look at the table. Don't look at the enemy. Look at the table. On the table, there is the children's bread. There is healing. There is deliverance. There is wholeness for your mind and your body. But I got news for you. 
there is more on the table. Amen. Because in his covenant, what God, when God makes a covenant, when he says, I am, it means all that God is, he's making available to you. All that he is. That's why Ephesians 1.3 says, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Every blessing God has is on the table. It's for you and me to receive it. Right? If the bread has gone down, if you think the bread has gone down a little bit to John, to Joe, to Mary, you say, hey, pass the bread. I want to take. You look at everybody else. They're eating of the bread. They're getting their healing. Hey, pass the bread. I'm at the table. And I have a right to everything that's on the table. You have a right to everything that's on the table. And it's your heavenly father who has prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Amen. So don't look at the enemy. Look at the table. Partake of what's on the table. Partake of his blessing. So every need you and I have in our lives. I know this morning we are focusing on healing and wholeness and deliverance. But some of us may have other things. You're fine physically. But there may be something else you need financially or socially or in your marriage or in some other situation. But that's on the table. It's on the table. And your heavenly father has prepared a table for you and me in the presence of our enemies. So I want to encourage you and I. Healing is yours. It's the children's bread. It's what the Father has put on the table for each one of us as his children. There's no way any earthly parent would sit at the table, put the bread and say, let me see if you dare touch it. <laughs> no. No. Any earthly parent says, please take as many slices as you want. Take. I'd be happy to see you eat it. So much more, our Heavenly Father. We'll be delighted when you and I partake of the table that he spread for us. Now look at this woman from Canaan. Three simple things that, that really stand out in how she approached Jesus. First of all, she desired to have this. Right? Because Jesus told her, woman, great is your faith. Be it unto you even as you desire. You see, you and I must desire. Many times we don't receive from God because we just don't desire. Our attitude is, maybe God will drop it down on me. If he wants to, he'll give it to me. Look, that's not the way it works. Sorry to use that language, but that's not the way it happens in the realm of the spirit. In the realm of the spirit, in spiritual things, desire is important. And we understand that even in the natural. You have to desire for something. You can't say, if the government, if the university wants to give me a degree, let them give it to me. You can wait till eternity and beyond. It won't come. It's available, but you've got to desire for it. Got to desire. Same thing in the spiritual. You've got to desire. It's on the table. It's yours. But you've got to desire. You can't take, you cannot afford to take the posture if it God wants, I will have it. God saying, I put it on the table. Now reach out and take it. You've got to desire it. Second thing we see in this woman is she was determined. Like we saw, you know, so many objections. Jesus didn't say anything to her. Then he told her, I'm only for the uh, lost sheep of Israel. Then he said, I can't take what's the children's and give it to the dogs. You know, so many objections that she pushed past all of that. She was determined to get it. She was determined. So we must be determined. God, I am going to receive what's on the table because you have made it available to me. And thirdly, she received it by faith. Jesus told the woman, great is your faith. So faith is believing the word of God. Faith is believing God and his word. Now, you know, may, the problem with many of us is this. We want to feel it and then believe it. Faith is not based on your feelings. Faith is based on the word. When you lock into his word, when you lock into God with your faith, then your feelings line up. Then your situations line up. 
then your circumstances line up. But we have to lock into him, God and his word by faith. So God, you said it. I believe it. That's it. Healing is mine. I'm taking off the children's bread. It's mine. I'm locking into God by faith. Then your feelings will line up. Your body will line up. Your circumstances will line up. Your situations will line up. But we've got to settle our faith with the word. Amen. God said, by his stripes, I have been healed. Settled. Body, you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Line up to it. Amen. So, don't base your faith on your feelings. Base your faith on the word of God. Settle that. Your feelings will align up. Your feelings will change. Your body will change. Sickness will leave. Your body will amend. And all this will change. But your faith has to be locked into the word. This woman locked into who Jesus was. He's my healer. She, he will deliver my daughter. No, nothing else. No questions. She came like that. Yeah. Another story that we're going to look at this morning is in Luke, the 13th chapter. Luke chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. The second miracle we're looking at today, Luke 13, verses 10 through 17. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, There are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore come and be healed on, on them and not on the Sabbath. The Lord then answered him and said, Hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? And when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame. And all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Now think about this. Here was a woman. We don't know at what stage in life, at what age this problem came. You know, just imagine maybe she was a teenager or she was in her 20s. I don't know when. But at some point she was stricken with this problem. And now she had this problem for 18 years. So 18 years have come and gone. She's coming in and out of the synagogue. She probably came every Sabbath in and out of the synagogue. And she just remained in that state. Here came Jesus that day into the synagogue. Saw this woman. Look at on what basis he set her free. Or let's look back up and say, look at what Jesus said about her problem. He said, Satan has bound her. He didn't say, my heavenly father, oh, she's having Job's troubles. Or Paul's thorn. He didn't say any of those things. He said, Satan has bound. See, you and I must be very clear in our hearts, and our minds, our spiritual understanding. Sickness and disease does not come from God. There's nothing in heaven. Bible describing heaven says there is there's no sickness, no disease. It doesn't come from God. But it is Satan. Jesus clearly identified. Satan has bound her. It is Satan who's troubling her. Satan who's brought this upon her. On what basis did Jesus say she should be free? Jesus said, she is a daughter of Abraham. She is a daughter of Abraham. What does it mean? So you go back in the Old Testament. God, Almighty God, made a covenant, a blood covenant with Abraham. And in that covenant, he did not explicitly state, part of my covenant with you is healing. He didn't state it. But he simply said, I am yours. Simply means, 
all that I am is yours in this covenant. I am your rewards. I am yours. And he said to Abraham, Abraham, this covenant is not only with you, but with all your descendants after you in their generation. This is Genesis 17, verse 7. So, so hey, Abraham, I'm making covenant with you. I'm making a blood covenant with you. But not just with you, but all your descendants. Isaac, everyone, 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 everyone in their generation. I will stand by this covenant. So here you have this woman. A couple of thousand years after Abraham. And you know what Jesus is saying? She's got a covenant in her life from Almighty God. She's got a covenant. And on the basis of that covenant, there is healing for her condition. There is wholeness for her condition. Because of that covenant. Are you listening? On the basis of that covenant, with God made with Abraham a couple of thousand years before, this woman has healing as part of the blessing of that covenant. And so she should not be in this way. What the devil is doing is not right. Today, you and I are in a covenant with God. A blood covenant with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus paid a great price on the cross. Where he was crucified, where he shed his blood. Where he took upon himself our sins, our sicknesses, our diseases. The punishment for our shalom was on him. He paid a complete price for our wholeness. And he set and placed a new covenant. Which the Bible says is a better covenant than any of the old covenants that you, that you would read about. He said, this is the new covenant. And you and I are in covenant with God. And as part of this covenant, all that God is, every blessing that God makes available is in that covenant. It's yours. Amen? So let's say this together. I'm in covenant with Almighty God. Healing is mine. In God's covenant with me. Every blessing is mine. In God's covenant with me. But there is an enemy, Satan. He attempts to prevent us from enjoying the blessings of our. God. That's what he was doing for this woman. She had a blessing, healing, but Satan kept her bound. Can you imagine that? Isn't that sad? But think about how many of us believers, we have this wonderful covenant with God, where God says, Jehovah, I, Jehovah, the eternal, self-existent, covenant-keeping God, is making myself available to you through this covenant. All that I am is yours. But then there's enemy who robs us of these blessings. Now in the natural, when somebody leaves a will behind and you are named as one of the benefactors of that will. And they have said, you know, you will receive this, this, this and this. And the will is in your hand. And if some strange person on the street wants to contest that will, what will you do? Will you sit down and say, yeah, take it. <laughs> or will you say, it is written. I have the will. Amen. And that's how we have to deal with the enemy that tries to rob us of our covenant blessings. It is written. So on the basis of that covenant, Jesus delivered this woman. Said He broke off what the devil had imposed on her. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. But the anointing of the Holy Spirit set this woman free. She was free that day. Amen. So I want to encourage you and I this morning to realize, to recognize, to come to a spiritual understanding that healing 
is part of God's covenant blessing on your life. It is yours. You are not trying to convince God to heal you. You are not trying to persuade God to be your healer. He said, I am your healer. He said, I put it on the table. He said, I made it part of the covenant. Take it. It's yours. It is yours. Wholeness. Healing. Wholeness of body and mind is yours. We have to receive it. Now, just a few things here before we pray. God releases miracle healing in many different ways. So, there's not just one way in by which God heals. Sometimes we receive healing by just meditating in the Word of God. Because God's Word is healing to our whole body, Proverbs 4.22 says. God sends His Word and heals us. So sometimes you're just listening to the Word and that Word is alive. That Word is powerful and that Word administers healing to your body. Amen? God ministers healing maybe through the laying on of hands. So sometimes you receive prayer. People lay hands on you. That's another way. Sometimes they anoint you with oil. And that's another way. You receive healing through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. There are times you feel the healing anointing. The Spirit of God is moving in that way. And people get healed. There are times with the gifts of healing. So the workings of miracles and the words of knowledge that are called out. Healing God administers healing that way. So there are many different ways by which God releases miracle healing. So don't put God in a box. Be open. Receive. You, you, somebody ministers to you one way, nothing happens. It's okay for you to you know, receive ministry through some other way. It's okay. God could heal you and heal. He does heal in, in a multiplicity of ways. Are you with me? So don't limit your God and don't limit how God has to minister healing to you. Just be available and say, God, I receive it. And last thing is this. We receive miracle healing by faith. By faith. That's how this woman, the woman from Canaan received her faith. We believe God. You say, God, I believe you're my healer. I believe that by the stripes of Jesus, my body has been healed. My body is for the Lord. I command every cell in my body to be healed. The Holy Spirit in me quickens my mortal body. You believe the words. Have faith in the word of God. Amen. Now, what we're going to do this morning, I'm going to first of all, I'm going to lead us in a confession. In a confession. That means we are together going to say what we believe. Why is that important? Because Paul taught us in Romans 10, he said, with a heart man believes unto righteousness. That means when you believe in your heart, it puts you in a place of right standing with God. With a heart, man believes. What is the outcome? What is the result? With a heart, man believes unto righteousness. You're in a right standing with God. Then what happens? With the mouth, confession is made. That means you're now saying what you believe in your heart. With the mouth, confession is made. What is the outcome? What is the result? With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That means your confession, when you believe in your heart, and now you say it with your mouth, it brings you into a possession of salvation. Salvation is what God is providing for you and me. A salvation in the Bible uh, includes everything. It's, it's healing, it's wholeness, it's deliverance, it's safety, it's victory, it's triumph, it's forgiveness of sins. It's everything. It's in one big package. So, so you are, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So confession is very important. It brings you into that place of possessing what you're going after, which God is making available to us. So you have heard the word this morning. And so you believe in your heart. Amen. Now, what do we have to do? We have to make confession unto salvation. That's why that confession, that declaration of what we believe is very important. It brings us into that place of possessing what God has made available to us. Amen. So, I'm going to lead us through just to confess the things that we've heard this morning. That you believe healing is the children's bread. It is yours. It's part of your, co your father's covenant blessing to you. You believe it. And you confess that. 
right? Now, while we are doing that, I want you to expect healing. I want you to expect God to heal you, that healing to manifest in your physical body. And as a sign of your faith, I want you to begin to do something you couldn't do, right? Don't sit there and wait for some sensation. Sometimes sensations come, but don't wait for that. You act your faith, your raw faith, whether you feel it or not. Whether you feel goosebumps, fire, tingling, gold dust falling, don't wait for those things. If it happens, it's okay. But don't wait. I'm waiting for gold dust to fall. Then I will act my faith. No, 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 no. Act your faith. Act your faith. So God, right now, I'm making confession that you are my healer. So I'm going to start doing something I could not do. I'm going to step out. I'm going to do something. And as you act your faith, healing will manifest. Amen. That's exactly how Jesus did it. He told people, rise, take your bed and walk. Stretch out your hand. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. He just told them to do something. And healing manifest. Amen? So that's one way. You know, again, remember, we're not limiting God, but that's one way we're going to lead people in to receiving healing this morning. We'll make other ways available to you for when you maybe for people to pray for you. We will have our ministry team up as well for you to be personally ministered to with the laying on of hands. So we'll make all ways, of, as many ways as possible, available to us this morning. But the important thing, you act your faith. Believe God's word. Amen? So, Let's stand to our feet. And, and this morning, we also want to take testimonies. I want to give opportunity for testimonies as soon as something happens. I just want you to come up to the left side, my left side up of the auditorium. Just come right up here so you can share your testimony. As something happens to you, a, a, a healing that has happened right here. Right now, I understand, like we always announce, sometimes you know you have to get it medically checked. And if you have to do that, that's perfectly fine. Get it checked first, and then you can testify. But if there's a healing that takes place right now, right here, that you can validate, you can say yeah, it happened, and I know I'm healed, then just come right up to the front. Uh, we will let you share very quickly what the Lord has done for you. Amen? Are you all ready? Yes or no, maybe? All right. Let's say this out loud. Bold and strong. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We are expecting that salvation. We are expecting that healing. We are expecting that deliverance. We are expecting that breakthrough. We are expecting God's work to take place as we make our declaration this morning. Now I also understand that there will be people with other situations, not just healing. So I'm going to pray right after we make a declaration. I'm going to pray over us, all right? Uh, I'll pray and just cover other things. And you'll receive that as well. If it's a financial situation, you want God's intervention in, whatever, just be open to it and we will pray over it. And then check your body, begin to do something that you couldn't do by faith. And if a healing manifests in your body, you know for sure, come up. There is no pressure. We don't want to pressure people into testifying. We just want God to be glorified. So if something happens, you know it's happened, then you come forward and testify if you need to go back, get it medically checked, that's perfectly fine. Amen? Let's say this together. I'm a child of God. Healing is a children's bread. My Heavenly Father has prepared a table for me in the presence of my enemies. I'm seated at the table. I'm eating of the children's bread. I speak over my body. Body in Jesus' name. You are healed. You are whole. By the stripes of Jesus. I have been healed. My body is well. The Holy Spirit in me. Quickens every cell in my body. Life floods my body. Sickness is dispelled. My body is healed. In the name of Jesus, I declare I'm in covenant with God. Healing is His blessing. Wholeness is His blessing. 
I resist every evil work of the enemy. Satan, take your hands off of God's property. My body is God's property. Sickness has no place in my body. I receive my covenant blessing of healing, of wholeness, of wellness, of shalom. It is mine. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now thank God for it. I'm going to just speak over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak over your people. These are your people people and by the power of the Holy Spirit I declare healing wholeness over each of them let the power of the Holy Spirit come upon them right now destroying every work of the enemy in the name of Jesus I declare them healed I declare bones to be healed injuries to be healed wholeness to flood their bodies and their minds in the name of Jesus Jesus Christ, I declare every chronic conditions to leave their bodies in the name of Jesus. Let the healing power of God flow through their bodies right now. Let the power of God flow through their bodies right now, making them whole. Father, I speak over their lives. I declare shalom over them on the authority of the cross of Jesus Christ. I declare well-being over their finances, well-being over their relationships, well being over their families, well being over their children, that all be well over their lives in the name of Jesus. Let there be growth, let there be increase, let there be multiplication in the name of Jesus. I declare that over their lives in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Now take a moment just to check your body. And if you received healing, something's happened to you right now. I want you to just come forward. If a healing is manifest in your body, I want you to just check your body. Take a moment or two. Check your body. If a healing has manifested in your body, and you know it. I just want you to leave your place. I know those of you up in the balcony, you may have to walk down the stairs and come. But just come forward right here to my left. They give you a mic, and you can just share quickly what God has done for you. Worship team, please come up. We'll just get ready. So... If a healing is manifested in your body, take a few, just check your body and just come right up and we will take your testimony. Thank you, God. Thank you. All these takes the first person to step out. The East, they, they played very safe. They wait for the service to get over, then they come and say, Pastor, this happened. <laughs> but I, I just, you know, I just want you to share publicly what God has done for you. So if something has happened in your body, just... Just come. Now, those of you who are watching live, uh, you're welcome to text in your testimony right now. Of course, you can always email later. But if you can just text it in, those who are uh, handling that, uh, the live stream will be able to share with us. Um, so we could uh, acknowledge your testimonies as well. just going to worship God a few minutes and uh, during that time it's your opportunity just to come forward and just be ready make yourself available so we can take your testimony but I believe that God has done wonderful things I believe it amen and of course some of you who need to go and get medically checked please do that get yourself medically checked and then you can email in your testimony we can share it you know whenever you send it in you can send it in with your just saying what, what has happened. We're going to worship God a few minutes. And during that time, just feel free to come right up. Uh, we'll take your testimony before we close this morning. Thank you. Thank you.
want to call our ministry team up please come and just line up here so that you can make yourself available to pray for people uh, who need personal prayer we're going to uh, once we dismiss we will let people come up and uh, receive prayer to the laying of prayer ministry to the laying on of hands just come please make yourself available uh, right up here in front so that we can pray for people just please make yourself available you have a testimony. God bless you. We can move this. Can somebody just move this plastic table away? God bless you. You can walk up here. I had pain in my knees. When pastor was praying, when I stood up, I felt the power of God over both my knees and the pain in my knee has gone. Pain in your knees is gone. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you, God. Anybody else? Just feel free to come out quickly and share your testimony if you want to do that this morning. Thank you. All right. So, Brenny, you want to share? Brenny's running out. Bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. For the past two weeks, I was suffering from severe pain on my right leg. I have slip disc problem, but since two weeks, you know, I am having severe problem for my right leg. I cannot get into the car, come out. I cannot sleep. Today, the past is ministering. I was struggling. I don't, want, I don't want to be ungrateful to my God. I'm a missionary. 
I go and speak in gospel meetings. I pray for people. And if I am not experiencing this miracle in my own life, what's the use of my life? So I don't want to sit quietly there. I know how I came to this place in the morning. I was really struggling. But I believe in the supernatural power of healing through the stripes of Jesus Christ. Anywhere, everywhere, for anybody. And this morning, I claim it in the name of Jesus Christ. And I've received it. And I have it. Thank you, church. God bless you. Anyone else? God bless you. I just give that to you. All right, Suresh handles are online. What's happening online, Suresh? Okay, I just uh, got a message from uh, Brother Oliver. Um, so he says that his uh, son has been healed. They prayed right now for uh, optic. <laughs> Uretris, something like that. So, uh, optic, something, it, something the eyes. Even yeah, I'm not a yeah, doctor, so. Yeah. <laughs> so it says optic uh, neuritis. Optic I, I neuritis, samitis. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Such a... Optic neuritis. Okay. Regarding the nerve. Uh, the eye, nerve to the eyes. Okay. What's the rest for the testimony there? Yeah, that's the testimony. It's from Brother Oliver. He just prayed right now. And his son uh, is and, healed. Uh, he's confirming that. Yeah. Wonderful. That's live online. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Oh. Anyone else? Wonderful. Thank God for these testimonies that are coming in. We'll have more and more. Those watching live as well, send your testimonies in so we can celebrate what Jesus is doing. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to close. We're going to dismiss. Uh, just one quick report and update. This past week, I was in Delhi. We had, there was a youth, youth conference there. We had about close to a thousand uh, pastors, youth leaders, youth pastors there. Uh, I'm just sharing this because we distributed about a, a set of four books to all of them, all those pastors and youth leaders. Uh, and uh, we we're actually gearing up for something bigger next year and for 2021 uh, uh, to impact North India. Uh, so I just want to say thank you. You know what, what we, what's happening here in Bangalore is is just being spread all across North India to bless bless them. So thank you for being part of what God is doing. Amen. Let's close, please. Yeah, another testament. Okay, go ahead. Kavita, go ahead. Yeah. Last Supernatural Sunday there, I had this desire in my heart for half a mark that I needed. Otherwise, I had to repeat the exam. And that week, God did it. And I'm so grateful. Amen. It's not just about it. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. So this was from... Last last month's supernatural Sunday. God bless you. God bless you. Any other testimonies? Amen. Amen. Okay, Susanna. God bless you. Is it okay? We're just taking a few testimonies. People are slowly coming out. <laughs> um, so this was last uh, supernatural Sunday when Pastor was praying for finances. Um, my three month salary was withheld. Uh, from the company side because uh, of some uh, misreconciliation uh, uh, from the companies and it wasn't my mistake. I had submitted all the documents and uh, it was a very difficult time for me and my family. Uh, my mom was not well. Uh, she was admitted in the hospital. Uh, finances were difficult because my sister got married and we spent a lot of money there. But God is good. 
he's so good i asked for prayer uh, with some of my friends and you know very close ones here in church um, and everybody prayed for me and um, i was just sitting in office and i was like lord what can i do to move this right and the lord was just very clearly telling me use what you studied and do the reconciliation yourself you know because i'm i'm from the finance background and i did the entire general ledger reconciliation of my uh, finances and i sent it over to the finance team and i said hey you can't withdraw my uh, salary it's against the labor law uh, if you do not reconcile my account um, I will have to file an FIR and go to court. Uh, I, I will take uh, the company to court. You need to reconcile my uh, account. Uh, I mean, my boss called me and he's like, you can't send threatening emails like this. And I said, my salary is withheld unnecessarily, right? And um, just in about one week's time, they came back and they said, yes, we will reconcile the account because we've got your uh, uh, expenses and your balances uh, corrected now. And um, just the end of that week, uh, after Pastor prayed, um, I received the entire uh, reconciliation amount. Just want to praise God um, and thank Him for what He did. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you for sharing that. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Pratiba. Okay. Yes. I feel very shy to come and say testimonies, but God really insisted today I go and say because I was so busy looking at the enemy and not at the table. I was always trying to do this warfare. Today I just said, no, I want to take from the table. And uh, this chronic pain in my bones that I've always had, where I could never sleep for years. I just felt it. Uh, be, I'm, so, I'm so healed in my ankles and in my bones. And I claim this uh, shalom to my son's life in all aspects of our life. Thank you. God bless you. Bless you. Amen. Amen. So we're going to just get ready to close. And those who need personal prayer, remember God also heals through the laying on of hands and through the prayer of faith. So uh, our leaders are here. They'll be available to minister to you through laying on of hands and prayer of faith. So please feel free. Uh, not just for healing, like we had other testimonies. It could be some other situation that you just need prayer for. They'll be available to pray with you, minister to you. And we'll dismiss so that we can, you know, we'll have the liberty to take time to uh, pray and minister to as many people uh, who need that. Right? And also just believing God for couples, married couples who have, uh, uh, don't have children. We've been praying for that. Just believe that God will release children for married couples who don't have children. Amen. Let's close in prayer. I just close. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I also release children for married couples who don't have children. We break the yoke of barrenness in the name of Jesus and release children. Lord, across all our congregations, married couples who don't have children, let them receive the blessing of children. We thank you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit continue with all of us, always, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, TV programs, publications, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play stores.